Greetings, and welcome to Earthling Cinema. I am your host, Garrix Wormuloid. This week's artifact is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows, which, fittingly for a story about wizards, pulls off the incredible magic trick of turning one book into two movies. The film begins by documenting the rise of Tom Voldemort, who is seizing power despite having lost the popular vote by three million. But rather than address foreign policy or the collapse of the middle class, his primary focus is on health care, specifically ending the health of a high school athlete named Harry Potter. Unfortunately for him, Harry is healthier than ever. Look away. I'm hideous. Harry is determined to defeat Voldemort by destroying all the pieces of his soul, which are called whore crutches, since, as everyone knows, whores have no need for souls. Apparently, all the adults are too busy for this incredibly dangerous mission upon which rests the fate of the free world, so Harry enlists two other high schoolers, Hermione and Hismione, or Ron for short. The first whore crutch is a locket, and they quickly get that by mugging an old lady. They can't figure out how to destroy it. Incendium. Defend. Reduction. But then a horse ghost shows up and leads Harry to a big letter opener, which is perfect for this sort of thing. Next, they travel to someone's dad's house and learn all about the Deathly Hallows, the Elder Wand, the Second One, and the Cloak of Invisibility. Harry realizes Voldemort wants the Elder Wand because it's the only thing powerful enough to kill him, a teenager of below average height. Some more stuff about whore crutches, and then it's off to school, since they're a few months late and those tardies can really add up. Voldemort and his army arrive to burst their bubble, and Harry realizes Voldemort's snake is the final whore crutch, or so he thinks. In a stunning Pepsi twist, a coked out Snape Mountain Dews the impossible by revealing he's been a good guy the whole time. Oh, and as long as he's revealing shit, might as well mention that Harry himself is actually the whoriest crutch of them all. Harry surrenders to Voldemort so he can get in one last hang sesh with Gandalf. I mean, Obi-Wan. I mean, gay Santa. Voldemort has just finished telling everyone Harry is dead when Harry wakes up, making the V-Man look pretty foolish. Some nerd opens the snake with the letter opener, and then Harry and V-Money try one last time to save their relationship, but to no avail. Harry breaks the Elder Wand so nobody can do magic ever again. As a reward for all their accomplishments, the main characters don't age for the rest of their lives. Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows explores the evils of prejudice in a mostly affluent, mostly white society. Voldemort considers pure-blooded wizards superior to those with mixed ancestry. It is Miss Burbage's belief that muggles are not so different from us. She would, given her way, have us mate with them. His campaign harkens to the Third Reich, when, ironically, Albus Hitler targeted Jews for being too magical. Closer examination of the series reveals countless examples of marginalized groups. House elves are slaves to powerful wizarding families. How dare you defy your masters! Goblins are seen as greedy and untrustworthy. Noah! Dragons aren't allowed to wear clothes. That's barbaric. Countless. Harry disregards these oppressive labels, just as he ignores the stigmas attached to people like Looney Lovegood. The film suggests that Harry's acceptance of difference is one of the essential components to his success, along with being famous. Because he befriended Luna, he gets crucial assistance from a terrifying ghost. Are you a friend of Luna's? And Dobby, whom Harry freed from servitude, gives his life to provide the necessary emotional beat to bridge the two movies. The film uses biblical allusions to accentuate its message of tolerance, and to remind people what the best book was before Harry Potter. Harry bears many similarities to young Jeezy Louisey. They share a nickname. To be the chosen one. And both exhibit meaningful scars inflicted by enemy attacks. Harry's return from the train station mirrors the resurrection story and the idea that a sacrifice in the name of love may deliver people from trains. In contrast, Voldemort takes his sobriquet from Satan and shares his association with the snake the least Jesus-like animal in the world because of its inability to wear sandals. The film concludes that moral virtue is not inherent, but rather a product of one's choices. Despite all the horrible things that have happened to Harry, like never getting a cell phone, he not only refuses to take vengeance on those who have wronged him, but puts himself in danger to help them. Nobody is irredeemable because it's never too late to choose to be less shitty. Snape becomes a double agent so he can have free reign to act like an asshole. Draco stops being an asshole and develops face blindness. <gasps> I can't be sure. 
and Draco's mother develops pulse blindness. Dead. But as the fable of the Deathly Hallows teaches, in order to be truly good, one must curb his ambition. The Elder Wand symbolizes the lure of power and its fatal consequences, to which Voldemort naturally succumbs, as would a great many others. Just saying, that's the Elder Wand. Most powerful wand in the world. It would be invincible. Harry chooses instead to destroy it, emphasizing the fact that he is an idiot. For Earthling Cinema, I'm Garrix Wormuloid. Disappeario. Hey everyone, Jared here, Garrix Wormuloid's intern. Thanks for watching. If you like this video or anything else Wisecrack, one of the best ways to take a deeper dive into a bunch of the stuff we cover and love is The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus offers more than 7,000 top-notch on-demand videos covering everything from math and science to writing and literature, as well as far more practical topics like this one, Harry Potter, whistleblower hero taught by real-life human Thomas A. Shippey. Whether you're studying mechanical engineering, physics, or if you're a liberal arts student studying public speaking to make your own Earth Artifact reviews, there's something for you. Another awesome thing about The Great Courses Plus is that there's no homework, schedules, or deadlines. Learn at whatever pace you like, which is great since you lowly Earthlings have to deal with time. To get started and to get your free one-month trial, just go to thegreatcoursesplus.com slash earthling or click on the link below in the description. Thanks to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this video and to Mr. Wormy Lloyd for hiring me. And we've got tons more videos on the way, including ones on Beauty and the Beast, Doctor Strange, Westworld, and more. So be sure to click here to go to our channel page, subscribe, and watch another